Greetings, boys and girls. Uh, let me show you what a happy fat puppy looks like. Shh. Oh, she woke up. She's, she's afraid that I'll get her and take her in the shop. She got to where she don't like loud noises and stuff in the shop. That's what I'm good at. So I leave her out there with the air conditioner on, pampering my puppy. Here's my Valance. By the way, if you get a chance to watch The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, uh, that's an excellent Western. Not that I'm too much into Westerns, but, you know, you'll like it. There's my original back Valance. Scott Best would say it's tender. It's about rusted in two. Where the rubber bumper goes and it's had some collisions pretty crooked crooked as a fiddler's elbow we know is this as big as it goes no nope. come on there you go and here's the original front balance off the little darling and it's pretty straight it's got some knots in it here and there but at the same time rusted in two where it don't need to be rusted in two and I did some cleaning up down here to find out it's pretty tender and then I bought a used balance and it's got holes and this part here was mashed in pretty hard it's still where I mashed it back out still got lots of dents in it and uh but it's in, it's in one piece for a little bit. Yeah, it's got some holes in it. But it, it resembles the thing a little bit better. So what I did was I took some paint stripper, which I'm not real good at, and I stripped it, and then I used the uh, Scott Best method of scraping it off and then oh the screw's almost ready to come out mm. Mm. it helps to have a finger that you can't feel so you just make small marks on your fingers anyway got that out so I got this to mess with instead of that and this is going to be a major thing but who knows and uh, I washed it back off with vinegar. It's the only thing I could think of to kill the acid. Of course, when I was putting the acid on it, I got it all over my face, slopped it all over my face, and I just started putting it on. So I kept on going. I said, it'll start burning here directly. And it did, so I had to stop and wash my face a little bit. It reminded me when me and Danny Harmon was working on the chillers there at work and we got into the bromine all over us well somewhere on us and it the bromine's bad it takes your skin off to the bone quickly so he got it on his arms and on his face and it took his face off to the bone or to the shiny parts underneath the skin and it got my hands of course and on my arm and eat that to the bone and uh, you know we just kept on we washed off and kept on going it's too late now to do anything and the hospital won't let you grow skin back on so just one of them tough it up and you don't tell nobody at work because they'll put you on workman's comp and make you go home and that's not a good thing I used to think of workman's comp as a maternity leave for guys but I don't, I'm not bad-mouthing people that have to use it. It just wasn't for me. I thought I was tough. And you know the results of being tough. You, I can't stand up for more than a few hours a day. That's what tough does to you. It's tough and stupid. Here's an adapter that I bought, had made actually, from my machine shop fellas. And what it does, besides scooping, scooping the wheel out nearly too far 
is it allows you to put this on the little car. I'm not sold on it yet because, well, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. Not sold on it. Maybe a goopy look. But I'm used to goopy looks. Oh, okay. This is for Pete in Florida. He's got a guy that's thinking about looking at my big block. Here's one of the pistons out of it. It has C6AE-C for Moco Rod and it has an area rust piston and this and it says 400 on that side but the old thing didn't run long enough to get too much stuff dirty they had a uh, an extended oil pan on it and it failed. The pickup failed. So they spun a rod and I'll show you that in a minute. And this here, some guy come by and told me that this was a 427 stuff Ford. C3 AEC. Which I kindly doubt because this piston is smaller than this piston and uh, oh don't make me use the measuring stick okay let's use the measuring stick this is going to be real precise too I don't know it looks like a four inch piston to me So I don't know. We'll go look. Let's go look at the block and stuff. Shall we? Da, da, dee, dee. Oh, dust on the triumph. <laughs> uh, back into the dungeon. Okay, here's the poor block. And the block numbers are... I'm just not left-handed. C six M E A, and it's got air pistons in it everywhere. You can see how clean they are. The old thing, and. Uh, you got it greased down for what little bit good it is. And then mains. Anyway, the mains are ten thousands and the rods are standard. <sighs> and I clean this off to find out what kind of cam it is. But the numbers I think is on the back end. And it had a double roller thingy which he I used to know what this was and exactly years, months, and dates and stuff, but I've lost that in my mind. A couple of car wrecks and divorces and stuff, and you lose what you got. The crank is FMOKIO, and it says K right there, and then over here it's got a mark 1U. And then it's got an eight there, and then it's marked ten thousandths. And I had grease all over it, but this throw right here is the one what throwed. I don't think it throwed because the rod's still halfway straight, but gosh almighty, this thing weighs, well I don't know how much it weighs. But maybe you can see that little notch right there. That's the only thing wrong with the darn thing. That one throw. Uh, 
And the same guy that told me them pistons were so 427-ish, he said, wow, this is one of them super duper pooper scooper crankshafts. And I know it's got to be a good hard crankshaft, some kind of a special one. But I don't think it's a Le Mans or something like that. But it does have a pretty good ring to it. So it's hardened and forged and done all that stuff to it. But howsomever. And that's all I know. Rods, pistons, oh, let me show you the heads that go with this thing. If needed or wanted or desired. Uh, I just planned on going in a, over in a Torino Cobra Jet or a Torino. I was going to make my Cobra Jet like I used to have as a small child. Uh, these are the double pattern GT heads. They've had guides and a, a uh, valve grind and then they back cut the seats a little bit. And they're a double pattern exhaust and I've got the manifolds that goes to it so that they'll fit in the small bodied cars. There's the other one back there all greased up. And where that's a 60, this is a 67 AE A head. So it's a 67 AE head. In case something, the numbers need to do something. Uh, I'm just so amazed at how big stuff is on these big blocks. I had forgotten, along with lots of stuff. But there's tons of. of heavy things that's turning inside one of these things. Well, they got to really do something to uh, to move all this metal. That's a lot of reciprocating weights and stuff. And huge bearings. Of course, the, I pull some rod bearings out of it and they're standard. Somehow they say standard. Anyway, uh, what we're doing today, boys and girls, is we're having some rich frosted mini donuts. See, this is a tip. You can have as many black frosted donuts with dirty hands as you can possibly do. But if you get the snowy ones, you're going to get snowy stuff all over your grease and grime. And uh, let's see, outside of doing that, last time I was here, I put some goober stuff on my windshield wiper motor. When y'all suggested that, and I already had it planned, but it's good to have somebody else's excited ideas for it. But it needs cleaned up some more and detailed. But we got to do other things before that rat's peeled. And the old girls are sitting there. I've uh, done a few clever wiring things on it to keep up and catch up. And uh, this in here needs to be stripped and done something with. But that's all down the trail. I don't spend too much time out here these days till I can get my gumptions a going. So it's just one of them human things. The, bad, the worst thing about being here is the, the, the physical part, the human part of it. Oh, so, uh, I'm going to say uh, Saranachi to y'all, and I love you, and y'all have fun. And, uh, gee, I need to tell you the story or two, but that'll probably be at the house. When I get this stuff done in here, I'm about to pass the scrape anyway. To go home and look at the walls for a few hours. Maybe I'll come back. Oh, happy, happy Memorial Day. I love all, all the vets here and there, the ones that are over there and here. Uh, 
General Patton, in one of his favorite speeches, which I like General Patton, but he wasn't my favorite general. Uh, but anyway, he said, uh, he said, uh, we should celebrate the live heroes that we have the same as we celebrate the ones that, that were killed in action, the dead heroes. He says, uh, by golly, they're just as important as the ones that didn't make it. And uh, he's true. He's right. So, uh, you know, they're all heroes to me. I don't care if you uh, run a soup kitchen or was up there with Audie Murphy shooting all them Germans. Uh, you're all heroes to me. And I know a little bit about fighting for your country. And I wouldn't call myself a hero, but I was around lots of people that were. And uh, love them dearly. And we got a lot to thank them for. Everything to thank them for. Them and our good Lord. So, uh, you know, there you go. I'm going to get up here before I start blithering more. Okay. Bye. Hit the button. Hit the button.